The Mullet and the Muff, an erotic Madlax hate fiction by Digibro. My excursion from Nefris, land of my heart, taken form in the beauteous cuteness that is my young lover, ever slightly absent of mind, but never so of my adoration, even as I quizzed the nature of the shape-shifting snakes that are her follicle dilemma, was to be a trip purely of business, never minding the vicarious excitement of co-workers gushing that Gaz Sonica is the paradise of this world. Yet while the mildly impressive beauties of the middle-upper-class metaphorical Eden indeed delighted in otherwise somber effort in search of truth, t'was a beauty wholly of the flesh which scorched my heart that I might even for a while forget my true love's face whilst tangled betwixt bedding comforts and the ample thighs of a mercenary. Her name alone might drive me mad, so intensely that the breakdown of my constitution constitutes an utter loss of faculties, resulting in a fetid stream of excrement expelling itself from my body as though I'd been treated to a box full of laxatives. I dare utter it only between the lines, for fear that if placed upon them, it may take my mind away again. She was a lit stick of dynamite thrown in my face, an eldritch abomination slithering from the depths of hell up into my hotel room, there for my protection, though she might have killed me through all those times she took my breath away, without mention of the times her humble services flatly failed to accomplish anything. From the moment I laid eyes on her, my advances were stunted only by a putrid aura emanating around her. I sent her to the shower as soon as we got to the room. While she was occupied, I contacted my informant, the one who had insisted upon a mercenary for my protection. "'Have you regrouped with her?' he asked. "'She has a mullet,' I responded. Before the conversation could proceed, my correspondent was suddenly silenced. I spun to react, meeting the woman fresh from the shower. As per my fear, the removal of her stench had not stayed the onslaught of bestial hideousness, but in this state she was approachable. Upon the sight of my CG fan dildo, the ultimate aphrodisiac, she was too horny even to stand, ass-planting herself parallel to me. She looked me in the eyes as my gaze remained fixed on her Road Warrior era cut. T'was the first disaster of the head more startling than my lovers back home to ever grace me with its presence. The heat of my disgust set a fire between my legs. I went straight to business, pouncing forward and shoving her sturdy body back onto the bed, knowing as I did that for it to budge, it only could have caved willingly. Opening the drapery of her shower gown, I dug the cavernous depths of her ample, unyielding thighs. It felt like hours upon suffocating hours of battling a continuous onslaught of flesh before I emerged upon her glorious muff. It hung broad and loose like the sleeve of a wizard, gaping and breathing like a tunnel beckoning the car of my fist to drive through, perhaps my entire arm. Even my foot wouldn't have met much resistance. Her clitoris was Moby Dick in the ocean of her vulva, as massive as it was strangely elusive. With all the spirit of Ahab, I thrust the spear of my tongue upon it. This generated the first of near-constant waves of liquid crashing against the helm of my cheeks. There simply was no end to it. All the while, she never moved nor made a sound. Only when I sought brief respite and a gasp of precious air did I glimpse her satisfied face, full of modest approval. That was nice, she said, and then she rose from the bed, reminding me that she had to get dressed and get to work. I knew she had to go, but I couldn't let her. Upon her completed dressing, I shoved her onto the couch and began touching her all over, and much over there was to be touched, might I add. I lost myself in her, imagining only the sensation that I fantasized her feeling, unlikely as it might have been that she could feel anything. A couple minutes of that, and then she shoved me off again with a smile, saying, I appreciate it, but I'm busy. Finally, I allowed her to leave. Night fell whilst I remained transfixed upon the bed, all day touching myself and thinking of the rolling mountains and rough, flame-scarred plains of that unforgettable body. And then, finally, a sound. My demigoddess of hell had returned and started to undress, ready to sleep on the couch. Surely this was a tease. You can just sleep here, can't you? With me? She obliged. Three infinite hours, the blackest shadow play we acted out in the moonlight. Constant growls and barks in passion and rage, our bodies crushing and smushing one another. Before long, I was covered in bruises, suspecting a fractured rib and a busted lip. Every limb was soaked in vagina filth from constant curiosity over just how much I could fit inside that void of her crotch. Our demonic dance only dwindled to a halt when no part of my body remained capable of movement. Basking in the afterglow, my head full of fuck. 
I asked. How old are you? Probably seventeen. Ah, what a thing I had done, to forget my true love in throes of horrendous, passionate battle against another the same age as she. Though filled with shame, tears welling in my eyes, I knew that I had followed the true intentions of my heart. I regretted nothing. I know not of what became of the monstrous woman. She faded in the night like the terrors thereof which she so resembled, and by morning and my waking she was nowhere to be found. I never saw her again. The next night my flight back to Nefris was waiting. I decided to forget all which occurred on that night and not speak of it again. The night is long in Gaz Sonica. The Mullet in the Muff. End. Audience reactions to The Mullet in the Muff. Jesus, man. Lesbianity is wrong. Okay.